Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. On the night of July 2nd, 1985, around 11 o'clock, Delhi Police Constable Abdul Nazir Kunj and Home Guard Chandrapal were on patrol in one of Delhi's posh neighborhoods. While patrolling, they heard a woman shouting loudly. The woman was selling vegetables in the same area. Upon sending the police towards the sound, they saw a fire rising from one of the famous hotels in the area, Ashok Yatri Niwas. Abdul Nazir immediately informed the fire brigade and, along with his companion, rushed towards the hotel. Upon reaching closer, they discovered that flames were emerging from the Garden Barbecue restaurant inside Hotel Yatri Niwas. As the police officers approached the restaurant, they noticed the hotel manager, Keshav Kumar, present at the gate. When asked about the fire, Keshav explained that there were many old posters and banners in the restaurant, which were being burned. The police officers are not satisfied with this response and attempt to enter. However, Keshav Kumar somehow prevents them from entering. Now the police officers suspect that something is definitely wrong, so both officers leave. But the constable now goes towards the back of the restaurant and jumps a wall from there and comes inside. Once inside, he sees old posters and banners being burned in the kitchen area of the restaurant. When Constable asks, they reveal they are actually roasting a goat. Constable remains skeptical and carefully inspects around the traditional North Indian clay oven, these types of oven called tandoor in India. Suddenly, their attention is drawn to a human hand. The constable realizes that these people are burning someone, and despite pretending not to see, he leaves the scene pretending to be unaware. Emerging outside, both constable police teams are instructed to arrive at the scene immediately. Shortly after, police tries to catch both the criminals by raiding. At that time, two individuals were near the tandoor, one of whom somehow manages to escape the police pursuit successfully. However, the police apprehend a person named Keshav Kumar. The fire on the tandoor is quickly extinguished. On top of the tandoor was a burnt corpse, largely charred. The face was unrecognizable, though the jaw was not yet burned. It was apparent that it was a woman's corpse. Now the police immediately begin questioning the apprehended Keshav Kumar, leading to a revealing disclosure. This was a case that had crossed all boundaries in the world of crime. This news spreads like wildfire through the media, first in Delhi and then across the entire country and the world, that a woman has been murdered. Subsequently, her body is cut into pieces and burned in a tandoor. Everyone was enraged, eager to quickly see the main suspect behind bars. The police wanted to apprehend the suspect urgently, but he remained elusive for over a week. Amid rumors of the police preparing for an encounter, Delhi police suddenly arrests the prime suspect on July 10, 1995, in Bangalore. Some claim he surrendered after hearing rumors of an imminent encounter. After the arrest, the interrogation process begins, revealing startling revelations. Whenever discussions about the world's most notorious murder cases arise, the Tandoor case is invariably mentioned. The world also knows the Tandoor case as the Nainasani murder case. The method adopted after the murder was more shocking than the murder itself, placing the corpse in a tandoor. Hearing about it will send shivers down your spine. The reason behind the murder was as bizarre as the crime itself, so what's the whole story? Stay tuned till the end in our video to learn about the tandoor murder or the complete Nine Asani murder case. And if you're a new viewer interested in real crime stories, be sure to subscribe to our channel. The beginning of this story involves Sushil Sharma and his wife Naina Sani. Sushil Sharma was a commerce graduate from Delhi University. Not just an ordinary man, but a prominent name in Delhi's politics. In fact, Sushil Sharma was associated with the political party Congress, and at the time of this incident, he was also the president of Delhi Youth Congress. While Naina also graduated from Delhi University, she also received training as a commercial pilot. In a bygone era, Sushil and Naina Sani both worked for the political party Congress. During this time, a friendship blossomed between Sushil and Naina, and they grew quite close, so close that they began living together. According to reports, after entering into a relationship, Naina Sani distanced herself significantly from politics and attempted to build a career as a commercial pilot. 
Meanwhile, Sushil Sharma continued to advance in politics. After some time, they started living together as husband and wife in an apartment on the Temple Path. However, according to some media reports, they never officially married. While some claims suggest that Sushil and Nina secretly tied the knot, it was never brought to light publicly. According to these claims, Nina always insisted on making the marriage public, whereas Sushil consistently tried to keep it hidden. This difference led to conflicts between them, and over time, these conflicts escalated significantly. The impact of this conflict is that Nina Sani's interest in Sushil begins to fade, and Nina starts getting closer to her old classmates and a former Congress activist named Matlub Karim. With Matlub's help, Naina strives to fulfill her dream of becoming a pilot by leaving her relationship with Sushil behind permanently and going abroad. However, Sushil Sharma does not like this and suspicions arise that Naina is having an affair with Matlub, leading to conflicts between them. In the midst of these battles, Naina and Sushil's lives were unfolding, but everything changed forever on the night of July 2nd, 1985. When Sushil Sharma returned to his flat after being relieved from work, he found Nina holding a glass of whiskey in one hand, engaged in a phone conversation. Seeing Sushil, she extends the glass towards him, but he declines and asks, Who are you talking to? Nina responds, I'm talking to someone in my family. After saying this, Nina hangs up and goes to another room. As Sushil enters Nina's room, he goes to the phone and immediately redial the number. On the other end, someone picks up and says, Hello? Upon hearing the hello, Sushil hangs up. Actually, Sushil had suspicions beforehand, thinking Naina was spending too much time with Matlub Karim. Upon seeing Naina talking on the phone with Karim, Sushil becomes more suspicious. Even now, Naina continues talking to Karim, so as soon as she goes to another room after ending the call, Sushil quickly redials the number. When someone answers with a hello from the other side, it's not someone else but Matlub Karim himself. This leads to a heated argument between Naina Sani and Sushil Sharma, with both shouting at each other. Contrary to common belief, there was no shooting during this quarrel. They remained calm for a while. However, after a short time, Naina Sani tells Sushil Sharma, I am going to commit suicide. After this, Naina allegedly writes a suicide note. Shortly thereafter, Sushil hears the sound of a gunshot from the balcony. He rushes towards the room and sees Naina holding his licensed gun. The shot was fired, but Naina was unharmed. Seeing Sushil Sharma, Naina says, I will end my life now. Sushil Sharma tries to understand Naina and takes the gun from her hands. Both fall silent, but fate had other plans. Instead of ending here, a new battle between Sushil Sharma and Naina Sani begins. This time, the conversation escalates to the point where Sushil Sharma suddenly points the gun at Naina and fires. The bullet hits the wall behind her. Before Naina can comprehend, Sushil Sharma fires a second shot, hitting her neck. Before she can react, a third shot is fired, directly into Naina's head. With two shots, Naina collapses instantly, and the entire room is filled with blood. For a while, he couldn't grasp what had happened. After coming to his senses a little later, he starts crying alone. On one hand, he regrets his actions. On the other, there's tension about disposing of the body. A few moments after concluding this crime, Sushil Sharma steps out of his flat and checks if he hears any gunshot. After assessing the situation outside and normalizing everything, he goes to the market and buys a large polythene bag. With utmost caution, he places Naina's body in the polythene bag and then wraps it separately in a bedsheet. He meticulously cleans the room of any traces of blood. Additionally, Sushil earlier found and tore up the suicide note written by Naina, though later the police discovers the torn suicide note. In the end of the suicide note, Naina had written that she wishes Sushil to carry out her final rites. After thoroughly cleaning the entire room, Sushil positions his car near his door. Then, after attempting to lift Nina's lifeless body from the room, Sushil struggles to lift the heavy corpse alone. In the darkness of the night, he manages to drag the body closer to his Maruti 800, places it in the rear trunk, 
and departs from there. Sushil had left with the body, but he couldn't figure out what to do with it. After wandering aimlessly for a while, he comes up with the idea to dispose of the body in the river. Subsequently, he heads to the Aito Bridge in Delhi with the corpse. The plan was to throw the body into the river from the Aito Bridge, but when he reached there, the bridge was heavily crowded. Amidst the chaos, he decides to change the plan and opts for a different method to dispose of the body, directly driving to his Bagia restaurant. When Sushil Sharma went to the restaurant, there was a significant crowd and many people were dining. Sushil parks his car outside the restaurant, immediately calls his manager Keshav Kumar and instructs him, clear the restaurant as quickly as possible. Tell the seated customers that the food is finished and instruct all the staff to go out for lunch today. Keshav Kumar replies, there is still plenty of food left and people can comfortably continue eating. Upon hearing this, Sushil Sharma tells Keshav, do what I'm saying quickly, a significant problem has arisen. Listening to Sushil's words, Keshav Kumar swiftly starts emptying the restaurant and quickly sends the customers away. Some money is given to the staff to go out for lunch as well. Now only Sushil Sharma and Keshav Kumar remain in the restaurant. Sushil informs his manager Keshav, I have made a huge mistake. I have murdered my wife and now I need your help in disposing of her body. At first Keshav Kumar refuses to support Sushil but Sushil somehow agrees to reconsider his request to assist in the crime. After this, a terrifying game begins. Just now, tandoori bread was being prepared in the restaurant, so the tandoor was still hot. With great caution, they bring Nina's body from the car and together place it on the tandoor. The body remains untouched because the ordinary flames of the tandoor cannot burn it. Then Sushil instructs Keshav to bring crumpled paper inside to ignite the fire further. Keshav goes inside, retrieves old papers, which sparks a bit of flame and initiates burning. However, the fire isn't intense enough to fully consume Nina's body. Once the fire diminishes again, Sushil sends Keshav to bring butter kept in the kitchen to enhance the flames. As soon as the packet of butter is placed in the tandoor, the fire flares up. One after another, four packets of butter are added and the body starts burning effortlessly. To intensify the fire, more old papers are put into the tandoor along with the butter. Their plan begins to succeed as Nina's body slowly starts to burn away. Amidst all this, they fail to notice that the fire has become so intense that it's spreading beyond the confines of their restaurant. Outside the flickers of that fire, a woman's gaze falls and she provides information about the fire to a police officer. Then the whole case unfolds. According to Sushil Sharma's statement, as soon as the police arrive at the restaurant, he leaves and goes to his IAS friend in Gujarat Bhavan in Delhi. Without revealing anything to this friend, he stays there overnight and then departs for Jaipur the next day. From Jaipur, he escapes to Mumbai, goes to Tirupati Balaji Temple where he shaves his head. From here, he now goes to Chennai. Police catch wind of Sushil being in Chennai from somewhere. A police team immediately reaches Chennai, but before they can reach, Sushil Sharma escapes to Bangalore. The police follow him to Bangalore, and finally, on July 10, 1995, Sushil Sharma is arrested. After the arrest on July 10, Delhi District Court remands Sushil in police custody for the next 10 days until July 12, 1995. You can estimate that within just a few days, that is, on July 27, 1995, the Delhi police files charges in this case. The trial for this case begins in the Sessions Court on August 31, 1995. Sushil Sharma is charged under Section 302 for the murder of Naina Sani, Section 120B for criminal conspiracy, and Section 201 for tampering with evidence. Besides Sushil Sharma, his manager Keshav Kumar and three others are also accused in this case. The trial continues for several months. In 2001, a turning point occurs when multiple lawyers, one after another, refuse to represent Sushil Sharma, and for some time he remains without legal representation. To expedite the verdict in this case, the hearing of the Tandoor case begins, and after the entire trial, on November 3, 2003, Sushil Kumar is pronounced guilty of Naina Sani's murder. 
Keshav Kumar is also found guilty, while the other three individuals are acquitted. On November 7, 2003, a decision is pronounced by the district court, awarding death penalty to Sushil Sharma, while Keshav Kumar receives a seven-year prison sentence. Following lower court decisions in December 2003, Sushil Sharma appeals in the Delhi High Court in August 2006. The case undergoes hearings in the Delhi High Court, and on February 19, 2007, the Delhi High Court upholds the hanging sentence for Sushil Sharma. With no relief from the High Court, Sushil Sharma turns to the Supreme Court in 2007, and finally, in 2007, the Supreme Court commutes the death penalty to life imprisonment. Sushil Sharma spends his post-sentence life in Tihar jail. In contrast, Keshav Kumar, who served a seven-year sentence, is released from jail. Surprisingly, during his time in prison, Sushil Sharma worked as a priest. He was the only inmate who did not receive parole even for a day in 20 years. Finally, in 2015, he is granted a brief parole. In 2018, based on his good conduct, the Supreme Court allows him to remain out of prison. Now Sushil Sharma is leading his life freely after being released from jail. Many things in this case were seen for the first time in India, such as the first time use of DNA testing for identification in a murder case. The police filed the charge sheet in record time for the first time in a murder case. Initially, it was said in this case that Nina Sani's body was cut into pieces and burned in the Tandoor, but the investigation revealed that the body was not cut into pieces. Still, the method Sushil used to place the corpse was chilling. Friends, what is your opinion about the entire case? Please share in the comment box. If you liked our effort, like and share this video. Also, after subscribing to the channel for such heart-wrenching stories related to the world of crime, press the bell icon to turn on notifications. Thank you.